Hello YouTube friends. It's great to be here with you again. If you've been following the video chronicles, you would have seen in the previous video, I thought we were pretty close to being able to purchase the seahorses and start stocking the aquarium. But um, the cycle, the nitrogen cycle was taking longer than I anticipated. So while we're waiting for those high nitrite levels to convert to nitrates and eventually um, move out of the system so that it's safe for seahorses to add, I thought I would start showing you some of the decorations I plan to put in the tank. Now you may remember that I talked about keeping the tank bare bottom. That white stuff on the bottom of the tank is just some salt that still needs to be dissolved. It might be some of the minerals that are left. Um, that will get stirred up and um, underneath it looks dark because I do have some stick on um, plastic or vinyl coating just so that you don't see through the bottom of the tank and into the cabinet that the tank is sitting on. The reason I'm keeping the tank bare bottom is because it is going to be the easiest to keep clean. If you don't know anything about seahorses, they're terrible at digesting their food. They're very messy eaters. So between their food processing through them pretty quickly and um, the way they eat their food, Basically, food particles spray everywhere. And when you have any kind of substrate or um, any kind of decor that has nooks and crannies in it, it's a place where toxins can easily build because that's where the waste or detritus builds up. You can't always see it or access it, and it just contributes to poor water quality. So I am going to keep the bottom bare as far as any kind of substrate goes, but I am going to put in decor, and I have to put in some decor because seahorses need something to hang on to. So I'm gonna show you some of the things I'm thinking about, and then probably in the next video, I'll show you what I ended up doing, what I ended up choosing based on the space that I have and how things look. So in addition to wanting to put in decor so that seahorses have a hitching post or multiple hitching posts, I do want to add a little bit of color to the tank. So let me show you some of the things that I'm contemplating putting in. Here is a rock glued false, I guess, coral or flower. It is plastic. Um, I like having plastic because it's easy to clean off. I don't have to worry about particles breaking off. And because it's really important to keep seahorse tanks super clean, as clean as possible, um, I'll have less chance of having problems where seahorses will get sick with some of the typical diseases that they get when invisible uh, particles, um, water quality parameters impact the ability for seahorses to do well in their environment. Okay, so let me put that down there and show you something else that I have. Here is a faux plant. It is slightly weighted on the bottom, so it should stay down at the bottom of the tank. I don't need any kind of substrate to help it stay. I'm not really sure how this is going to work in a seahorse tank because even though it's weighted and it shouldn't float when I put it in the aquarium, I don't know if it's too light. Um, as the seahorses grow, they may be strong enough where they're swimming around and actually holding the plant in their tail in midair. So um, that's just something that I'll play around with. But again, I just wanted to see different ways that I could possibly add some color to the aquarium without adding substrate. Here is another plastic plant. And again, this is the same situation where I have a heavier base. So this plastic plant should stay secure at the bottom of the tank. It's a little bit heavier and bulkier than the green plant that I just showed you here. So that one may have more potential than the green one. But again, I'm going to play it by ear or eye or how things work out when the seahorse is here. Are here. As I mentioned, it's going to be sort of an experiment. 
Another thing I'm going to put in an aquarium is sort of something that I put together myself. This is a large sea fan. Real sea fans are a type of coral. This is plastic. Again, I like that it's plastic because I don't have to worry about um, things leaching into the tank and impacting water quality. And again, it will be easy to clean, but it's really quite large. Uh, it's going to take up a big space in the aquarium, uh, but you can see there are lots and lots of hitching places. So um, seahorses will have a lot of vertical locations where they can hitch along the water column if they like. Now this particular piece that I bought didn't have any kind of base, so I sort of creatively used some coral um, this is dead coral, coral skeleton that I had in my cowfish aquarium. And I actually bleached that out, let it dry out in the sun um, to remove any growth, any kind of detritus or um, anything in there that could pollute the water. And uh, it's, it's pretty clean. And I ended up using some plastic ties and manipulated the base so it is sort of inside of the coral and um, it's pretty stable here and it's heavy I'm not worried about the seahorses lifting this one up and that should fit in there pretty nicely like that it'll also add a little bit of color with the white contrast on the darker bottom and that contrast there it looks nice with the dark plastic here against the white a coral skeleton. Something else that I'm considering putting in, again for color, this mimics the um, turtle grass that a lot of seahorses have in their natural environments. Uh, I don't know if there's a freshwater version of this or not, maybe it has a different name. But again, it does have a heavier base, but it is lighter, so I don't know if it's going to be worth keeping in the aquarium or not. Again, I'll just have to experiment. And you know, it's interesting too, when you have seahorses, you put in decor thinking that seahorses might like certain things, and you can often be surprised that they like some things better than others. Here's something that I think was a terrific find for me. I don't know if you can see it. It looks sort of like a chalice in some ways. I think probably the original purpose of this was for um, housing candles or melting candles. I got this at a thrift store. It's glass. I like that it's glass because it's easy to clean and you might be thinking, well, what on earth is this for? It's a good idea when you're keeping seahorses to have something that's called a seahorse feeding station. And all that is, is a central location, a consistent place where you put their food. So it's not just floating all over the tank. In this way, you don't have to chase down any uneaten food and um, try to get that cleaned out because it's going to contribute any leftover food that the seahorses can't find. It's going to contribute to the waste load in the tank as it breaks down. So what's nice is the seahorses will get used to the food being put in a specific place. It only goes down about this far. It doesn't go all the way through. They will always look there if they're searching for food once they get used to this. I like that the rim is high enough that any motion in the water will not disrupt the um, Basically, it's going to be the mysis shrimp that I'm going to be putting in here. So it's deep enough that the mysis shrimp, shrimp can go in there and not get sprayed around, but also not so deep and narrow that the seahorses won't be able to get their snouts in here and get the food that they want. And if at any time that the food isn't finished, seahorses will know that they can always come here for more. And it also allows me to see how much they're eating and if I'm overfeeding them, underfeeding them. So ideally I'll want to get to the point where I'm putting in just enough that they'll finish it up within a feeding. I mean, if there are a couple of pieces left, I'm not concerned about it. 
But if I'm consistently overfeeding, they're not eating all the pieces that I'm putting in, then it's really easy for me to clean that out. I can just do some sort of baster to do that and I don't have to worry about it decaying in the tank. What that you may be wondering, why do I have a pedestal and how on earth am I going to get the shrimp in there? Well, just to show you for context, I'm going to hold this up next to the aquarium and you can see that the pedestal puts this dish more or less at the top about a third to halfway through the column when it's inside there. And I'm going to use a trick that I have learned from other seahorse keepers as far as getting the food into this dish without getting my hands all wet. I took one of my tubes from a, one of my old clean, gravel cleaners. I took the lid off the top and this is going to be just about the right height where I can put the shrimp at the top from the top of the tank. It will gently float down to the bottom and it will go right into this dish. And in fact, using this process in the past i've had the seahorses actually try to snick at the shrimp as they watch it sink down the tube because it's transparent as they're awaiting it to get to the little feeder dish that they have here um, i use the word snick that's what seahorse keepers call it call it just because that's what it sounds like when seahorses try eating their food. So when the seahorses are here and I feed them, you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about as we watch them eat. And it's kind of fun when they snick and it's just a healthy part of their eating. So that's what I have right now that I'm thinking about putting in the aquarium. Again, this piece here, this tube will not stay in the aquarium. I will rinse it out and reuse it every time that I feed seahorses. Um, they'll be fed two to three times a day, depending on any growth spurts that they have, how much they eat in a session. And, um, you know, because the tank is smaller than I want, I really have to watch that water quality. But uh, hopefully next video, I will have these things in the tank and we can get an idea of how they look. Um, I really like this find that I have because I could not have picked out anything or created anything better myself. One thing I do want to mention about it is I want the seahorses to be able to have something to hold on to while they are looking at their food or trying to get at their food. So I do have another plastic smaller sea fan and I'm probably just going to use another plastic tie and attach the sea fan mm, towards the base here and then you can see that this sea fan comes up a little bit higher past the cup here and then they'll have a place to hitch on to while they eat while they eat there are actually some things called hitch, seahorse hitching posts on ebay but they're pretty darn expensive and so i already had this sea fan on hand i didn't buy something else for it i did buy this chalice looking device here but it was only a couple of dollars at a local thrift store and I love that it's glass because glass cleans up very easily. I don't have to worry about anything leaching into the aquarium. I don't have to worry about um, getting out anything that might embed itself and contribute to the water quality in a negative way. It just cleans right up. It looks nice. It's not going to be um, intrusive in the tank. It's not going to take up a lot of space and it's not going to really block my view too much with the seahorses. So I'm really excited that it's getting closer and I'm going to be adding in the decor pretty soon. And um, so that's what we'll do for our next video. We'll take a look at how the decor looks. And then shortly after that, we'll do some more, more water tests to see if we're any closer to being able to add some seahorse inhabitants. Thanks so much for joining me today and in my video. And I look forward to having you with me next time.